And another great day in this greatest nation on God's green earth, where this nation is so great, so favored. You look around the world and you look at what's going on, and wow, we're so lucky to be Americans. You got to ask a big question what's wrong with the United States? Why do people have this sense that we can't do anything anymore? I mean, it's just complete madness. I live in the Seattle area, and here we have. Um, the, the problem of Bertha, which has been getting some national attention, which is this multi-billion dollar project. It's our own version of the Big Dig. We're taking down an old, outmoded, almost 60-year-old viaduct, an elevated highway. And they're supposed to be digging a big tunnel underneath it. And so they got the world's largest and most expensive ever in all of human history tunnel boring machine. And then it hit a pipe. It was an eight-inch pipe. That's all. Bertha's, what is it? It's 7,000 tons. It's it's a very, very big piece of equipment. And it hits one eight-inch pipe. It's broken now. And they don't know how to fix it. And they have to go through so many rules and so many laws to fix it. There, there's just a sense that America doesn't work anymore. You can't get anything done. Look how long it took them to build something on the site of Ground Zero. I mean, it's only now, really, it's only now 13 years almost after September 11th. They're finally dedicating a museum and maybe the Liberty Tower will be done sometime soon. So nobody has spoken more eloquently, I think, or insightfully about this sense that that we are just incapable of the great things that our country did in the past then uh, my friend and college classmate, Phil Howard, uh, known to you as Philip K. Howard, his uh, very influential bestseller, The Death of Common Sense, is a must-read book for anybody who wants to know about what's wrong with the American legal system. He has a new book about what's wrong with our political system. It's called The Rule of Nobody. And uh, Phil, congratulations on the book, though I got to say it's it's kind of disturbing reading uh, you start off at the very, very beginning, the preface to your book, with a um, with a, a case that I think will ring true and familiar to many, many Americans, and it's a case of a fallen tree. Why is it a government matter when a tree falls down in a storm? Because we've tried to pass a rule for everything. I mean, we're trying to tell people how to live their lives. This isn't about the goals of government. This is about micromanagement. And this tree fell in a creek uh, in Franklin Township, New Jersey. It caused flooding. Town fathers sent in a backhoe to pull it out. And then the lawyer said, oh, no, you can't do that because that's a Class C1 creek, whatever that means. And they had to go through an application process, took 12 days and cost over $12,000 in legal fees to do what was completely obvious, to pull a tree out of the creek to stop the flooding. Welcome to America. America now ranks... 20th in the world in ease of starting a business because there's so many permits required and so many requirements that you have to have a law firm on your side to start the smallest business. 1-800-955-1776 is our phone number. The new book is called The Rule of Nobody, Saving America from Dead Laws and Broken Government. And the author, Philip K. Howard, I recommend everybody check out this book. It's up at our website, The Rule of Nobody. Uh, Phil, you say in the book that right now it's not that our government is run by Republicans. It certainly isn't. It's not even that it's run by Democrats. The government is run by dead guys. What do you mean? <laughs> well, well, all these laws and regulations are written by people who are long gone, most of them. You know, the special ed laws, a very good goal, was passed in the 1970s, and we needed it. The people who wrote it are long gone. Now the special ed laws consume over 25% of the total K-12 budget. There's no money for gifted children, no money for early education. Is that the right balance? Congress isn't even asking the question. The, 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 you know, they treat all these old laws like they're the Ten Commandments, except it's the Ten Million Commandments. <laughs> You know, and, and 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 they never go back and clean them up. And so, you know, every choice in life has unintended consequences. Whatever you decided this morning didn't quite work out the way you decided. And you have to go 
back in, you know, and adjust, like riding a bike. You, you know, you balance here and there. Well, we're not doing that with law. We just throw these things onto society, and at this point, it is literally paralyzing our society because of all these laws written by dead people. 1-800-955-1776. And what do you say to the classic conservative argument that, wait a minute, uh, we deliberately wanted, and Madison and the founders deliberately wanted to make it hard to change things. We didn't want to make it easy to change things. Uh, what's wrong with the fact that it's very, very difficult in America to alter anything? Well, actually, Madison said there's nothing more pernicious than a law that's outlived its usefulness. Amen. Uh, but he, um, but during the debates over the Constitution, the the uh, anti-federalists were concerned about, um, you know, Congress passing too many laws to take away state sovereignty, so they put in all these checks and balances to make it hard to enact new laws. But that's a perfectly reasonable thing to do. The problem is they forgot about changing or getting rid of old laws. And it turns out to be exponentially harder to get rid of a law than it is to pass it in the first place because there's a special, an army of special interests that surrounds it. That's why special ed laws, one reason, nobody will touch them. They won't even talk about it. It's not because of campaign finance. It's because the special ed advocates are zealots and they'll chain themselves to your door. You know, So nobody's even talking about it. It's just, we've made it almost impossible in our constitutional structure to get rid of obsolete laws. 1-800-955-1776 is our phone number. Uh, your, your book, I, I think, is, is, is a probing and exactly right in your analysis. And actually, I've experienced something like this in my uh, personal life recently because I've been involved in religious congregational life, and we are in the process of trying... Uh, to acquire a building from uh, a different congregation of a different faith. And uh, this is, both congregations want to do this. The problem is just trying to get through local ordinances, which are, it, it's it's mind-boggling. Are, are you aware of the pervious, impervious kinds of concerns that exist? Uh, no, out? no, that's one that hasn't. Per, the, permeated my pervious. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, to, just so that to so make sure you're pervious to this, there there has to be uh, for the first of all for the number of seats in the building, there has to be a certain number of parking spaces, even if you're part of a religious denomination where people don't drive to services. Okay, fine. So um, you need that, but then in addition, you need a certain amount of the ground that you're going to be occupying that has to be planted so you can't take away any of the parking uh, you, if you take away uh, some ground that is planted that has dirt on it and you have more ground that's asphalt you're in trouble right does this sound right. sensible yeah, to yeah, you okay now now i've got it yeah it's, it's these two <laughs> rules coming in conflict so classic it's a classic problem of modern law which is the rules end up being like godzilla and king kong you know they're sort of going at each other and and there's nobody that has authority to say, oh, well, yeah, okay, of course, you're walking to the service. You don't need to have all that parking. Right. Well, okay. So, but this is this is a relatively minor uh, kind, but it's an example that's very close to home to me. Uh, you, you talk in your book about the drag that this is on our economy, and we all want more job creation. How does this kind of rule of nobody, that's the title of the book, impede job creation in this country? Well, for example, the environmental uh, review laws, which I think are important to have, but they've kind of mutated into taking a decade, right? With other countries, greener countries, it takes a year. In Canada, they have a maximum of two years. We take a decade. If we could get environmental review laws to have the review process take a year or two, we could employ two million Americans in the next three years. When... When Harry Hopkins, when FDR passed the Civilian Works Administration in 1935, it was enacted in November. By the end of December, less than two months later, Harry Hopkins had employed 2.6 million people. You know, imagine that today. You know, in 1956, uh, Dwight Eisenhower signed the Interstate Highway Act. 
Uh, Fifteen years later, they built you know forty thousand ro- miles of roads. Uh, now we can't even get approval to repair the interstate highway. Right. It takes it takes longer than that to build one mile of streetcar line. Uh, talk about stupid investment. We will be right back with uh, Phil Howard and your calls. The rule of nobody. What do you do to fix it? He has his ideas. Maybe you have yours. Give us a call. 1-800-955-1776. The Michael Medved Show. So many mistakes out there about our founders and what they meant and what they wanted. You can correct some of those mistakes for yourself. At the Medved History Store, uh, there are a number of uh, our special history programs, including one about mistakes, myths, and outright lies about the Constitution of the United States. Uh, you can check that out and much more. It's all on sale, special Memorial Week sale at medvedhistorystore.com. Uh, that's medvedhistorystore.com. And at our regular website at michaelmedved.com, you can find out all about the rule of nobody, saving America from dead laws and broken government. It does for our political system what Philip K. Howard did previously for our legal system with his influential book, The Death of Common Sense. Well, this book is must-reading, and he has um, endorsements on the book from everyone from John Stewart and Fareed Zakaria on the left to, uh, well, uh, lots and lots of people on the right, including a spectacularly positive review today in uh, the Washington Times. Um, Phil Howard, uh, if I were to ask you very directly, the most important thing we could do to stop this rules rule by dead law and and dead guys what could we do to bring our government actually back to life? Well, I think we we have to sort of change our goals for government. I mean, goal number one is is we have to have a mechanism. We have problems of institutional design. We have to have a mechanism to go clean out and fix all laws. You look at it and say, is it working the way we intended it to work? Do we need to spend this money now? Is there a better way of doing this? You know, we have laws on the books that don't acknowledge the Internet and the, you know, technology age. It's, just, you know, it's like the VA scandal or something. You know, it's all these, you know, piles of paperwork. Um, the, um, so that's one. The second is I think we, we need to start talking about government from a moral stand, standpoint. What's the right thing to do? Uh, forget about what the law says. What's the right thing to do? And, and, the, the, and this is yeah, something... People aren't asking the question that way. And this is something we were talking about during the break. Uh, the idea of more rules doesn't uh, do to make people more moral. Uh, the, the more rules you make, it's an indication not of social advancement. It's an indication of social decline uh, because they're, you're making rules about stuff that, that really ought to be common sense. And, and you can't substitute governing your own life or uh, governing – the life of the country or the life of society or life of business by rules that were made long ago. Yes, and it's true at every level. It's true at the daily level, you know, whether it's a principal forced to suspend a child from school because he had a one-inch Cracker Jack g- gun you know, <laughs> because of the zero-tolerance rules against gun. How does that teach the kid about fairness? That teaches the kid about how absurd the system is, right? Whether it's that... Or it's first responders letting somebody die because the rule says you <laughs> call 911. Or, or whether it's the president not able to rebuild infrastructure. You know, we had this $800 billion, huge amount of money. You know, it's a stimulus plan five years ago, 2009. Yeah, that went well. And, yeah, it was supposed to, the, the bell cow on that was to rebuild infrastructure. So they had a five-year report a few weeks ago. I went and looked at it. How much went to rebuild infrastructure? Barely 3% to build, rebuild transportation infrastructure. because Not because Obama didn't want to, but because he didn't have the authority to approve the most obvious rebuilding project. Let's go to Greg in La Habra, California. Greg, you're on the Michael Medved Show with Philip K. Howard. Oh, I got a question for you, Philip. Do you advocate uh, the same... Uh... Uh, non-restrictions or uh, permits that they do in China pollute the air, uh, pollute their uh, 
waterways and stuff that that you uh, might advocate here in America? Well, no, I'm not for pollution. I think pollution is a bad thing, and China has has real problems with pollution. But environmental regulation ought to be effective and not ineffective. So um, it's it doesn't you know a company like a country like Germany, for example, has a much greener footprint than the U.S. But its environmental review laws, you know, they do their their review in a year, and so we can we can we can rebuild things. So I think one of the points I try to make in this book is that the is that the argument between deregulation and more regulation is kind of in the wrong dimension. That most of what government does, most people want it to do, like protecting its pollution. But it needs to do those things effectively, and it's not doing them effectively. It's doing them idiotically in many cases, so or wastefully. So that's the that's the problem. That's the dragon to be slain here. Okay, let the record show that Philip K. Howard is opposed to pollution, as am I, by the way. Let's go to Byron in Fontana, California. Byron, you're on the Michael Medved Show with Phil Howard. Hey, good morning. This is a great subject. I think the problem is, I mean, obviously the problem is the size of government. It's too big. But I have a couple of examples of government workers that has directly affected my small business that uh, they, they just don't care. They don't understand profit margin. They're just unproductive people. And I don't mean, I, I am saying that I'm painting them with a, a broad brush. They're pretty much all that way. And I'll just give you a quick example. I'll get off the phone. You can talk about it. I have a, a yard in the city of Rancho Cucamonga, California. And there's a very strict code compliance with, the, with regard to use of the property. There's a section of that town where the government, the, the, the local city council, has decimated small business. I was in there trying, in, in the city hall, trying to apply for a permit, a conditional use permit. There's, you would not believe the red tape. <laughs> there are about five different government agencies you have to deal with directly, including the fire department. Because one of my trucks operates from off of propane, they were requiring that I put a different type of vent in my garage in the shop on the property should I decide to change the oil on my propane truck. That's just how ridiculous it is. But the point I want to make is I'm dealing with one of the workers down there, and she knew the neighborhood, the industrial neighborhood I was in. She was familiar with it. And she told me something. It was just profound. She said it was the wild, wild west down there. And I told her, no, it's not the wild, wild west. She said, we just do whatever we want down there. I said, no, it's a group of Americans who get up every morning and work real hard to, to promote their small business, to uh, grow the economy, just to do this. Okay, uh, we, we need to get a response from Phil Howard. Byron, I feel your pain. Phil? Oh, yeah, well, I mean, I, I think Bloomberg discovered he had to get uh, permits from 12 agencies uh, to open a restaurant in New York. Uh, a bridge, uh, re- raising the roadway of a bridge with no environmental impact in New Jersey required 47 permits from 19 different agencies. So this is a problem of institutional design. If, if we're going to have effective regulation, we need to have one-stop shopping. You, you have the, the main activity, whatever that agency is, have a way of designating them, and then they have to coordinate with all the other agencies. Okay, we... Gotta we fle- I, I, there's got to be flexibility. I, and I know we have to be flexible to allow Phil Howard to go. We'll continue the discussion about bureaucracy run wild... And what do you do about it? It's not quite as simple as just cutting back on government. We'll be right back. 1-800-955-1776. The Michael Medved Show. Four minutes after the hour on the Michael Medved Show. Uh, you should check out Phil Howard's book. It is called... Uh, Rule nobody rules. I mean, the rule of nobody, and uh, it is it is very much worth pursuing. Why? Because there is this general sense in the country that things aren't working right, and nobody has a particularly clear idea because it's not so simple to to solve the situation. One of the things that uh, Phil Howard actually talks about is giving the president of the United States more power than he has. And you know what? He's persuasive on that because 
the the problem with the president being so limited in the way that he can spend money on something big and stupid like the stimulus package, the problem is that no one's accountable. I mean, President Obama can turn around and say, well, you know, I, I wanted to spend more on infrastructure, but I couldn't do it because of all these rules and all of these laws and all of this bureaucracy and much of that bureaucracy the president can't even change. And yes, there were reasons to establish a civil service, but that makes it very hard to fire people. It makes it hard to replace them. Doesn't mean he can't replace General Shinseki. And by the way, the, the current revolving door at the White House is going to appoint Julian Castro, the mayor of San Antonio, who has no experience in the housing field as a, the new secretary of the Department of Housing and Urban Development, which, by the way, is one of those departments that ought to be eliminated, should not exist as a federal department. Really, the federal government is going to provide housing and urban development. Now, think urban means city. Don't we have enough rules and enough involvement just on the city basis? Have you had experiences, as I've had, um, where you're trying just basically to do positive things and things that don't bother anybody and they make it difficult for you? I remember an experience we had must have been 25 years ago. It's a long time ago. When Diane and I were living in Santa Monica, California, and that's a city that's particularly, well, at the time at least, and I I understand it's gotten a little bit better. They had a very, very left-wing government on um, the basis of rent control. That was the big issue, rent control. And we were trying to put uh, build an extra room in our house. We had a growing family at the time, and we wanted to put an extra room in our house. We got all the permits, we did all the applications, got the architectural plans, got it approved, went, we had hired a lawyer to put an extra room in your house. It wasn't changing. It wasn't changing the property that we owned. It was on our land, our lot. But we okay. We had to get all the approval, and that was fine. But then they did a thing where if we wanted to uh, add the extra room to our house, we had to pay an extra fee, which was I think it was 20% of whatever we were going to spend in putting on the extra room in our house to repair the sidewalk on the street, which wasn't our property. That's city property. But they, why were we supposed to do that? Because the city said we had to. And that was the rule. And we did. And then the city came in with our money that we had to provide and repaired the sidewalk. Now, I'm sure there are people out there who have had similar situations or situations like uh, we're dealing with right now with uh, trying to secure a new location for the congregation that I attend. 1-800-955-1776. It's just a nightmare. I mean... Even dealing with the bureaucracies in small towns, should it have to be that way? It's not just the accretion of federal power, though that's particularly obnoxious because particularly far away, but it also goes with the uh, state and local governments. Here's a, there's a brand new Gallup poll, and it's fascinating. It um, asks people the to describe the most important problem facing the country today. And it doesn't give a multiple choice. It says, you say, what is the most important problem facing this country today? Um, How many people said climate change? Well, what would you guess? 40%? How how many people um, do you think uh, said raising the minimum wage? Well, well, we'll get to that. You're going to be very surprised. We will be right back with your uh, calls and what people really believe are the important issues facing the country. Coming up. 1-800-955-1776. The Michael Medved Show. That's 1-800-955-1776. Forty-four minutes after the hour on the Medved Show, where it's easy to save fifteen percent or even more on car insurance with Geico. Just go to geico.com or call one eight hundred nine four seven auto. 
I asked you before about the new Gallup poll, what percentage of Americans in general, when they were asked, open-ended, number one problem facing the country, what percentage said climate change? That's a perfect zero. <laughs> I mean, not even among Democrats, zero. Nobody said climate change. Um, there were uh, some people um, who said the environment was the most important issue, but climate change, no, that didn't, that didn't come up. 3% said the environment was the most important issue. And what percentage said raising the minimum wage, number one issue? Raise that wage. Oh, it's also a perfect zero. And uh, among <laughs> uh, Democrats, the gap between rich and poor, for Democrats, 6%. Republicans who thought the number one issue was the gap between rich and poor, that's zero. Let's go to your calls. We go to uh, Martin in Haddonfield, New Jersey. You're on the Michael Medved Show. Hi, Michael. Great show, as always. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to, uh, you talked earlier about all the different outfits that you have to get permission to do something. I read in the journal a couple of months ago, I think, about the incredible number of non governmental organizations that are appointed or created by the legislature. They're not elected. They're appointed participants. And there are dozens of them in every county. Uh, And they serve, as near as I can figure out, as political dumping grounds for people to draw salaries. In some cases, they can extract fees. But they're virtually impossible to get rid of. Uh, You you have to have almost a plebiscite to, to, to say, okay, we want to end the Camden County Water Board Assessment Bureau, some, you know, they have these obscure names, and there are literally dozens of them in every state. No, it's one of the reasons, and and look, right now, I, I give some credit to Governor Christie uh, for trying to to deal with some of this in, in your state, but it, it's not just New Jersey, it really is like this across the country. The the level of undergrowth of just stuff that has grown up that it's impossible to get rid of. It's one of those things when you talk to people about firing uh, federal employees or state employees or even local employees, what you normally hear is you have to wait uh, to let them go by attrition. In other words, you have to wait till people retire and then, of course, retire with huge, huge pensions. Uh, Let's go to Bob in Blaine, Minnesota. Bob, you're on the Michael Medved show. Hi, Michael. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. I've got kind of a humorous take on working with the government entities. Um, I live in Minnesota, and uh, lived had about three acres of land. It was kind of marshy and stuff, and I wanted to build a uh, 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 skating pond for my for my boys. Being in Minnesota, of course, we play hockey. So I called the DNR and said, look, I'm going to get a backhoe back here. We're going to dig this out and make a nice pond for the boys to Skate and they, okay, so you have to call the Department of Natural Resources to build a skating pond on your own property. How, and yep, what you were yep. going to do is actually hollow hollow stuff out so there'd be enough water in there to freeze. Correct. Got Correct. it. To make it you know, not not overly big, but big enough to skate on and stuff. Right on your property. So, yes, sir. Go ahead. So I called them, called in, and they actually threatened me. They said if I do anything, touch any of that, or 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 change anything away from the natural way it is, uh, they, and if, it's, if I did that, they're going to find me. So I was pretty frustrated. I talked to my neighbor, told him about it. He goes, no, no, no. you got to call the DNR, tell me you're going to dig a duck pond. So, Michael, I called them back about a month later, so I'm going to dig a duck pond. They said, that's the best thing they ever heard. They were even going to give me some money to do it. Okay, this is the Department of Natural Resources <laughs> in, in Mark Dayton's, Minnesota. Um, I, this is so typical. Okay. So so, what happened? Did you build the uh, skating pond? Oh, well, it's a duck pond, but my boys skate on it in the winter. Uh huh. And uh, what hap- What do the ducks do when your boys are skating on it? Well, they're not there in the winter, right? They're, they're long gone. Yeah. Okay, they're long gone. Are you allowed to hunt the ducks on your duck pond? No. Well, nah, not not really. But not not officially. <laughs> I, no. I I appreciate. You. I think this is your neighbor gave you some of the best advice I've heard. And thanks for the story, Bob. Appreciate your ingenuity. Zach, Cherry Hill, New Jersey. You're on the Michael Medved Show. Yes, hi, hey, Michael. Um, uh, I thought you might find this a little humorous. Uh, I was moving from my uh, town, uh, my house, and it was a corner lot, and the, I had a sidewalk that wrapped around the whole uh, property. And 
since I was moving, of course, the township came in and spray painted orange spray paint all over the uh, the all the uh, sidewalk pieces that did not were not flush with each other, and they expected, of course, that I was going to dig them all up and um, and uh, you know replace them with brand new uh, new new sidewalk. Well, why would you do this if you were moving? Uh, well, you know what? <laughs> That's their chance to get get their sidewalk fixed or get their sidewalk replaced to hit me on the way out the door. In other words, okay. before you could sell your house, you had to fix the sidewalk. That's correct. Right. That's this correct. is this is similar to our experience. Oh, go ahead. So what happened? So, uh, so I, I asked them, I said, you know, so they're, it, it's, it's because they're not flush. And they said, yeah. So I went to Home Depot and I bought some pry bars. I pried up the uh, each block and I dug out the dirt and I hammered out the uh, or chopped out the roots that were lifting up the sidewalk. And I put every single piece back right where it belonged. And I had them come out and inspect it. And they, they couldn't say it wasn't flush, but now they have spray paint all over their sidewalk and they had to keep it. Okay, so right now this sidewalk is spray painted. With fluorescent orange, uh, yeah. See, how wonderful! You see, this was exactly the thing. <laughs> what, what the sidewalk that we were supposed to repair? There were trees that were in the in the median, also city property. They weren't our trees. I like the trees. They weren't our trees, but they had grown up roots, lifted up the sidewalk, and now it was our job to fix it. I mean, um, I don't know. It's 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 a very, very weird mentality that bureaucrats get into. I'll tell you, there's something else when you talk about politicians. I want to go down this list with you because it's pretty revealing the differences between uh, Republicans and Democrats. And and honestly, I think most thoughtful, serious people, you got to agree more with Republicans. For instance, there's one issue where a lot of Republicans think it's it's a pretty serious issue. It's one of the top issues for Republicans. For Democrats, it's a top issue for nobody. What issue? We'll tell you about it coming up. 1-800-955-1776. The Michael Medved Show. That's 1-800-955-1776. On the Michael Medved Show, uh, some progress that I'm very proud to report. A lot more people are focusing on this issue of accountability at the Veterans Administration. And yes, there was the first of what is going to have to be a lot of resignations. Now, that's a a very, very good thing. Uh, We need more resignations and we need more progress. And you can be part of it by joining Concerned Veterans of America's strike team right now. Pete Hexeth's group is the gold standard, is fighting the fight for the men and women who fought for us. Please give our nation's warriors the support they need. Concerned Veterans is going to be on the road this summer with the great band Madison Rising visiting 10 cities. Norfolk and Fairfax, Virginia, Cleveland and Columbus, Ohio, Dates and Tampa, Las Vegas, Orlando, North Carolina, and New Mexico are also scheduled. Go to summertour2014.com. To learn more, that's summertour2014.com to learn more and show your support for our veterans in person. Go to summertour2014.com right now, or you can go to Concerned uh, Veterans for America and join the strike team. Uh, Talking about (laughs) American priorities, and look, it, it is fascinating because so much of what our politicians talk about so uh, it's just out of touch with where people are. The the new Gallup poll shows that um, that that actually most Americans are pretty concerned about the deficit, the debt, uh, the national budget, and sixteen percent of Republicans say that's the number one issue. Three percent of Democrats. Is that a uh, difference? Who do you agree with more? Do you think that's a legitimate issue for the country? Of course it is. It's what the government spends. And so much of what both sides, to some extent, spend time on, what do people care about? The general sense that government is broken, bureaucracy, corruption, overspending. That's tied for number one with the economy in general, jobs, lack of jobs. And it basically you're talking about 70, 80 percent of Americans agree. And that 70 or 80 percent don't list some of the issues. Well, for instance, immigration. Immigration is not a big issue for Republicans, for Democrats um, or, frankly, for most Americans. And in fact, the new Politico poll shows that comprehensive immigration reform 
supported by 64% of Republicans, uh, 78% of Democrats, and 71% of Independents. Uh, th- there is so much more to talk about in terms of cutting back on some of the government intrusion in our lives. And it isn't just the federal government, though, especially obnoxiously and dangerously the federal government because it's so powerful and so far away. But also getting to local governments. Uh, how do you do that? Well, you, you can't do it by ignoring the political process. One of the things that's happening this fall is not just elections for Senate House, governorship, but for state legislatures and even some local bodies which count a great deal in this greatest nation on God's green earth. 